on my flight home from Germany. Took me a while. It's interesting. Uh, at the Frankfurt airport, mm-hmm. had to go through passport control to check out of Germany. Okay. Before going through security. Then after security at the gate, check in again. After I checked in online, checked a bag. Wow. Had to check in again. It's a lot of a lot of check ins, a lot of check ins. A lot of check with me. A lot of you know, I mean a lot of Omas there, right? Uh, either, either, either. But <laughs> so, you know, you're standing there and all these lines are about a half hour long each, some of oh, them. Oh yeah. And uh, staring in passport control. A lot of Patriots fans there. In front of me, behind me, a couple asked me, is Mac Jones done? Oh, is he yeah. done as quarterback? And it's just like, oh, yeah. I told him, my general sense is yes, but, <laughs> you know, they could start him coming off the bye, say that's the best for the team. It's, you know, we'll see. And then, uh, honestly, behind me, guys didn't recognize me or I didn't care if they did or didn't. It's not the point of it. On They sounded like straight out of Goodwill Hunting, Central <laughs> Casting, <laughs> lamenting how their years of dominance – We've been dominant. 20 years of dominance. Yo, kid. Uh, over. That's what they were like. Over. Lamenting. And this is a day later. Like they had had a whole night, a whole sleep, a whole breakfast. Like a lot of beers, kids. S- sitting there, <laughs> sitting there, lamenting. <laughs> lamenting how it's I'm over. Over at the airport. But we've been dominant for so many years. It's just really difficult for to just figure it out. And <laughs> and and one one of them even said they should have paid us. To come <laughs> watch this game. That's what one guy I mean, said to the other. They should have paid us. What was it, 10 6? Yeah. Um, dude, it, it was uh it was a it was a rough one. Yeah. Yeah. It was a rough one. But it was I don't I think I thought the final score was 13 9, wasn't it? I, I forget. Because you know, I I, it's just in a haze of, of weirdness when I, I I couldn't believe it that I'm in the commercial break. It's 10 6. And they get in my head. They get in my head and they're saying to me, Bailey Zappi's warming up. <laughs> Say, what? And I'm like, what? And they showed me up like on the screen. And I'm, oh my God, they're with, benching with two minutes to go. Mac Jones. And I turn to my uh, stat man, my, my spotter, Rich Gaynor, spot on. And my stat man named, wait for it, Sean Salisbury. Okay. Not the same guy, no, I'm assuming. Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> um, I believe he's a Syracuse guy. Oh, nice. So, at any rate, um, I turn to him. I'm like, when's the last time Bailey Zappi threw a pass in the NFL? He said, week five. So, they brought out a guy who hadn't thrown a pass in five weeks. That's how poorly Mac Jones was playing. And Bill was just like, that's it. Put him out there. And then the fake spike. I mean, it I called fast. it a fake snap at first, which, by the way, <laughs> kept me up all night. And a fake spike into triple coverage, and Jason McCourty was awesome in his analysis. Throw it into a host of Colts, and then they showed a shot of Bill. Like, Yeah, just like. Can't believe it. Yeah. So lots of questions. And to answer them is our friend from NBC Sports Boston. Bad signal. Tom Curran back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Tom? I'm tremendous. How are you? I'm good. Do you hear my whole setup? Do you hear my yeah. whole setup there? Yeah. Yeah, those guys are pissed. Pissed. <laughs> Who was pissed? Um, oh, I the just, guys. Oh, oh, I just, oh I, you, you mean that we're in passport control with me? They were pissed. They were. Yeah, they were hot. I got people. I was walking the dog today, mm-hmm. and old Mike DeRico stuck his head out, and he says, hey, I got an 11-year-old playing Pop Wana. He can, he can start. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. I know, Mike. <laughs> just trying to get Bo back in the house here. So what? Uh, <laughs> Tom, I, I I don't I don't know uh, what to make of all of it. Uh, I'll just give you the floor here and tell me what you know what you think is going on. The only thing I could I could yeah. say is I saw Robert Kraft there. You know, I interviewed him before the game, and he was talking about how the Patriots had waited a decade to play in the the market of Germany, and how the Patriots were the first organization in the NFL to translate their website into German. And how this was a bit, seriously, he was taught, and he wanted to win this game badly. And then that happened. So what do you think is happening right now um, at uh, at Patriots headquarters, Tom? There's resignation, I think, that this is going to end. It might end for the head coach and quarterback. It might end for just the head coach. But I think there's resignation that a change has to be made. Because there's a chicken or the egg conversation to be had with Mac Jones. 
in the first half, he was sacked five times. He had been sacked 16 times all year. Second half starts, and he gets brain lock on that third and two. Decides not to throw it to Demario Douglas. Decides instead to move around and finally throw it underhanded out to the flat to Ramondre Stevenson, where it could have been a pick six. He misses Hunter Henry in the end zone. He gets screamed at by Bill O'Brien, deservedly so. And then that wasn't just a physical letdown on the pick. That was a mental letdown. That's that's a 20-foot putt to you hit two feet with the tournament on the line. And to me, there's a there are a myriad reasons Mac Jones is what he is right now. And some of them lie simply with Mac Jones and his limitations. But a lot of them lie, too, with the decisions made around him, who he's throwing to, who's protecting him, the offense of three different coordinators in three years. But a first-round pick is broken. The players around the first-round pick are, are not sufficient. And the reason those players are here are Bill Belichick. And the team is spiraling. They're 2-8. and eight. You have to make a change. And I think there's a resignation and an acknowledgement that's going on inside the building that, that that's what's going to happen. Now, how much culture can they keep intact over the next two, eight, seven games? That remains to be seen, but you have to try and figure a way to do it with dignity. And I'll also ask you, Rich, mm-hmm. now do you understand why people were asking the question last week? No, yeah, I do. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I I do. Uh, no, no, Tom, I, I get it. Look, you, you've you got the boots on the ground. I'm sitting out here in Southern oh, California not, and I'm last year teasing. in Germany. No, I know. I mean, I am teasing. No, I know you like are. The, no, the you naked are. naked eye realization of, oh, my God, they're really this bad. I just didn't think that, you know, he was coaching for his job this week. That's That was my 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 point. Like, uh, I understand that everything that you said makes complete sense because I saw a team that was, um, you know, miserable to be straight up with you. Although David Andrews was very, um, he seemed upbeat. So did Mac Jones. Um, but when it all came down to, and, and Andrews after the game said, don't, don't blame Belichick. You know, we're playing like, you know what? Um, mm-hmm. And, and a lot of players, a, a couple of the old school players, I think Slater came out and said the same thing too. Yep. So um, it, it, I don't think he's lost the locker room. That was my point no. is I didn't think that, that he was coaching for his job in Germany at all. That's that was my pushback on it, but I do sure. get the sense that that this run, this remarkable run of two decades, um, is entering its final throes. I did I did leave that building that night with that sense. To be straight yeah. up with you, Tom, and, and the notion that Bill Belichick would be dismissed during the season that makes no sense unilaterally is still infinitesimally low unless right. Bill says. It, it, it's it's not working. Put somebody else in here. And I don't see Bill ever doing that just based upon everything we know about him and how he was raised and the things that he val- sees valuable. He would never say, I can't do it and desert. Right. And, so and that would never happen. The Belichick that we also found in our broadcast meeting too, Tom, um, seemed thoroughly engaged, loves ball. My God. I mean, like that. So it's not like that fires out, right? It's not like he's burnt. You know, I've seen burnt coaches before. That ain't him. I mean, he loves ball. He loves everything about it. He loves the scheming. He loves all of it. So my question for you is, um, where where do you think it all has gone wrong to the point where two and eight for the first time since his first year there? It goes to player personnel. It go, goes to drafting and free agency. It goes to, and Bill will say that a lot of this was caused by chasing competitiveness in the late 2010s you know and he he pointed that out in 2020 he said you know this is a reset we're in salary cap jail he wouldn't give Brady a two-year 25 million dollar contract guaranteed because he said they couldn't afford it my understanding was that Bill told Brady we can give you 22 and 0.5 on the on the salary cap that's we can't do any more than that and Brady was under the impression he was going to get a two-year 50 million dollar contract so there was a divorce from Brady in that 2020 pre March 17th departure that was financially tied. So Bill saw 2020 as a reset. And then with all the money they had, because the cap had gone down and the Patriots were in a great position when they shopped for players, they kind of went through like drunken sailors and bought everything. It was Nelson Aguilar and John Smith. And they hit on Judon. They hit on Henry. They didn't hit on Kendrick Bourne. Meanwhile, or they did hit on Kendrick Bourne somewhat. 
Devon Godshaw, you know, players who just, they spend exorbitant amounts of money on. They hit on Mac Jones, but then Bill would, I'm sure, point to the brain drain within the coaching staff. Josh left, Brian Flores left. Um, we've been rebooting in personnel with Nick Casario leaving and, and Monty Austin for it leaving. So we've been stretched there. So Bill would maintain, I think, that we tried to wring everything we could out of the late 2010s. And this is a rebuild that's ongoing. Yes, I accept blame that from Joan Williams to Tyquan Thornton to Nikhil Harry to Duke Dawson, we've swung and missed Isaiah Wynn on first through third round picks. I just did a list. There was too many to even send in that they've missed on. But the free agency, the player acquisition, the coaching staff setup has all conspired to leave the team where it is. And, and Bill at this stage doesn't have the same wherewithal, I think, to collect minds from around the NFL, nor the patience to train people. So the coaches on this team are like Mike Pellegrino is a former lacrosse player. And he's done a pretty good job at the corners overall, but he's not a tried and true coach who came up in, in coaching. You know, Joe Judge is here and he's not done a hell of a lot of good for the team. And, and he and Matt Patricia were both working here in large part because they were still on contracts from their former employers. So he hasn't done a, a real active job bringing folks in on the coaching staff, and he's done poorly bringing players in. So that's why they are where they are. So what do you think happens with seven games to go here? What do you got for me? On uh, this Mac front? Jones is going to almost certainly sit. You I think, think so. that he'll probably. Yeah, and I think he'll probably be, be dropped down to third string. Really? And you're going to elevate Will Greer, and you're going to elevate the player that took the final snaps the other day is, is Bailey Zappi. And I would, if, if I was a betting man, I would say Will, and I don't have any intel on this, but Will Greer gets the reps to be the starter. And if he fails in that, then Zappi would start and Greer would be too. And you proceed through the end of the year and you try and maintain the culture. They released Jack Jones yesterday, who'd been a pain in the posterior. JC Jackson didn't make the trip to Germany because he had been a pain in the posterior. So you have to make sure that the culture at least remains some kind of semblance of functionality. And that's how you negotiate the final seven games. Hmm. And then what happens with Mac? He's still on his rookie contract. He is. You can bring him back and have him be your bridge quarterback to the next guy. But is he suited for that as somebody who probably feels done wrong already? So we're drafting another quarterback. Well, why are you doing that? Because you suck. Well, why do I suck? I suck because you didn't do anything to help me. Is he going to be a, a negative in the in the locker room or would he take it um, in the way intended? I don't know. So that's that's the decision that they have to make. Whoever's making the decision next spring, whether it be Gerard Mayo and Bill O'Brien, whether it be some other coach from someplace else, that's the decision that needs to be made on Mac Jones. Do you want to keep him around as a bridge? You can't go into the season as him, him Bailey Zappi, and Will Greer again. Well, I mean, if you only have two or three wins, you you have a you have a real shot at some one of these studs in college football right now, Tom. Yeah, you do, but. When you look at the Patriots' problems, did it start at quarterback or did it start on the offensive line? Did it start on the lack of talent? You got Marvin Harrison Jr. sitting there. If you're drafting third and Drake May and Caleb Williams are off the board and you have an opportunity to take the Penn State tackle or Marvin Harrison Jr., you're going there. Even if Drake May is sitting there, do you sit there and say, we want to get another quarterback? And you look at Mac and say, he can, he can take us through this year. Let's take the kid – in the second round from LSU, is it Jaden Daniels? Yeah, right. Yeah. Even if he's there, or do you take collateral and move back into the first round and try and take him if he's dropping? I'm sure he's going to go a lot higher than we anticipate now, Sure. given his 600 yards last week. And then where's Bill next year? I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know how much there's... I'm in the minority in thinking that the people around the NFL are going to look at the situation the Patriots are in and say, I don't know if I want to sign up for that. I don't know if I want to bring Bill Belichick into a locker room and pay him $25 million and give him total control of my program 
and have my players culture uprooted in a way that didn't seem to take in New England and, and put that forth here just to put asses in the seats for a year or two. I, I don't know. Do you, Rich? No, think that I, I don't know. Again, teams are going to look at, do you think if teams are going to look at Bill the way they would have five weeks ago? Look, I mean, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a week to week thing and whatever, but he, <sighs> He is still Bill Belichick, man. I mean, you know, and and I understand, again, I, I, I just was around a team that didn't look very good on the field, and you got a sense despite, you know, again, Jabril Peppers, we spoke to him. He was delightful. So was Mac, I got to tell you, Tom. I'll, I'll be straight up. Uh, Mac was delightful, and so was Andrews. It, it didn't seem like they, they, they went into this game thinking they could win this thing, and who the heck knows. So it's not like he's lost the locker room. I mean, obviously, I'll defend him. I'm, I'm very biased towards mm-hmm. towards him um, and and his history. Uh, but I didn't see a guy checked out. I have no idea. Maybe he wants to do media. He'd be so damn good at that. Oh, my God. Um, but I guess last one for you. There's no scenario in which he and Kraft get together and he's still under contract, clearly. You know, my colleague Ian Rappaport said he signed a, a new deal prior to the season. Um, where he he agrees to cough up the groceries to somebody else, changes his staff in a way that uh, Kraft is happy with, and off they go. You don't think that happens? From my understanding, I don't envision that happening. Tom, appreciate the time, man. You're the man. Appreciate that. All right, bud. As always, good to chat with you. Great work over there. Really great Thanks, work Tom. with you and Jason. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. That's Tom Curran here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.